Hello, it's uh, Dave Safford from IES Technical Sales. Today we're going to talk um, about an application for cascade control for heating a part inside of a platen. And uh, I've got some explanations here and I've got a, a panel with uh, some parts that are specifically used for this application and I just wanted to walk through this real quick. Okay, so in this case we have a press and it has two platens, uh, one above and one below one above, below and one above. Inside of that are heaters inside these platens and here's the part to be heated. The concern is that if we let these heaters go and heat up to heat up the part temperature which is critical we could potentially overheat these heaters and it could actually put too much energy into these sections here and, and uh, melt part of the part or, or cause some damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to monitor not only the part temperature we're also going to monitor the heater temperature and we're going to do cascade loop. So you can see what's going on here. This heated platen is putting pressure on and heat into this part and we're monitoring that part and we're also monitoring the heater temperature. So what we're going to do, normally what ends up happening in a control scenario is we have a part set point, the temperature that we want the part to be. We'll say it's um, 120 degrees C. That's what we want it to actually be. And normally what would happen in a um, a PID output is a PID uh, calculation. This is the actual part temperature. We would monitor that part temperature and this difference between the actual, which is the green, and the black, which is a desired set point, would cause the PID calculation to output an output percent and turn the heater on. And in this case, it would be 100% until we got close to its set point. And then when it got close to that, the heater power would start to back off and it would control temperature to that point which would normally be be true. The problem is with 100% power out to the to the heater, we potentially could have an issue where we are over temp and we certainly don't want to do that. So, what we're going to do is this. So, this is just a real quick linear calculation of PID output. So, this is the PID output here in the blue line. That's 0 to 100%, 0 to 100%, and we're going to translate that to into zero in this case to its maximum temperature that we want the heater to see so that in this interface if it hits 200 degrees C something bad could happen so we're going to set our maximum temperature of 200 degrees C so at 100 percent output on our PID it's going to set a set point of 200 degrees C on our heater so here's the other loop this is the cascade loop so now what's happening is we have our um, our set point which is in black of um, of the, the heater set point. So from this um, this output now, zero to one hundred percent actually gets translated to a set point for the heater. So one hundred percent power, what we see over here, is actually going to be two hundred degrees C, which is this translation. So two hundred degrees C. So it's going to immediately try to go to two hundred degrees C. And in this case, this is the heat, heater power now, so we're going to allow it to go to 100% for a short period of time until the heater actually reaches its set point. And then um, you'll see that the, the heater power starts to back off in order to maintain that 200 degrees C, and then it'll drop down. And so we're using quite a bit less power, and we're more critically making sure that our heater is um, below um, the melting point at the maximum uh, point. So, in reality, what does that look like? So, right now, here is a, a just a, a real quick scenario. We have a control panel, which we'll talk about, and we have some heaters and a part. So, here's our part, and here's our thermocouple. It's just a small Kapton peel and stick uh, K type thermocouple that plugs into one input. The other sensor is monitoring the heaters. These are the actual cartridge heaters that'll be in the platen. So, we'll be monitoring that heater temperature, and that goes into another input inside the controller. So as this heats up inside the platen, it heats the part, and the part heats the sensor uh, for the part temperature, and we're good. So inside of this, so we have um, these two inputs here, and this is just uh, set up for um, 110 volts in, and um, this has a uh, cascade control, well, low temperature control, on-off switch, um, and a uh, power disconnect. So if we look inside the actual panel itself, we have um, the temperature control, 
uh, we have a solid state switch, solid state relay, some fuses, and the main power disconnect. So the main power is turned on, power flows through a um, control switch, goes up to this switch that turns power on to the controller itself, <clears throat> and it allows uh, energy to flow through the system. We've got the two sensors that are coming in from the outside. They're coming up. One is for control of the heating system, and the other one is for the part temperature. The output of the heater is actually going over to the solid state relay, which turns on and off to um, allow power to flow out to this terminal block where all the heaters themselves, so here are the heaters, they will be connected through a uh, conduit to this uh, terminal block on the back side. So um, that's essentially what this system looks like. It's relatively straightforward. It's done all the time. Um, if you have any specific applications about cascade control or control boxes or thermal systems, we at IES would love to help you out. Uh, again, uh, it's IES Technical Sales, so it's IESTechSales.com, or my direct number, again, is Dave Safford. Uh, it's area code 603-770-0534, and that is Cascade Control.